Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London, and today I'm looking at a book which has come to us from Sweet and Maxwell, Thomson Reuters organisation. It's on um, alternative dispute resolution. It's Brown and Marriott's ADR Principles and Practice, now in a fourth edition for 2018. It's been written by a number of people, um, Shirley Shipman, uh, Ben Waters, and William Wood Queen's Council, and the consultant editor is Henry Brown. Um, I'll show you in the book in a minute. Elizabeth and I talked about the book, and we've given it quite a long review title, actually, for our written review. The Rocky Road to Dispute Settlement. Can ADR smooth the path? Check out the discussion in this definitive uh, text, now in a fourth uh, edition. And that's what you're getting. Let's have a look at the book first of all. Red red cover, hard back. There's the spine. There's nothing else on the back. Uh, just going to the back of the book, we've got um, a very interesting uh, detailed index and the index also is paragraph numbered. So when you're looking at the um, trying to find things, it's uh, legal taxonomy. Uh, there is the note at the beginning, very much the house style for Sweet and Maxwell. If we go to the front of the book, uh, let me show you the front page first. There is the front page itself. Um, and you've got after that, um, there is a dedication, and I'll read it on this occasion, in the memory of the late Arthur Marriott, Queen's Council. Obviously, it's his name that uh, is on the title of the book. There's the blurb about the book there. Then there's a foreword, and then there's a, there's a further comment in the foreword. Uh, it's written by uh, Sir Alan Ward, Chairman of the Civil Mediation Council, um, uh, in June 2018. Do, do read the forward because it's always worth getting an idea. Then after that we have the preface itself, which talks a little bit about the history, it mentions Lord Bingham, and again it, it, it sets out exactly what the purpose of the book is now. Then you've got the table of contents, you can see the number of, of content sections running through. Um, we'll get to the end of that. You can see that there's quite a lot of detail with the various um, chapter headings. It's not a big book, this one, but you can see there are quite a lot of chapters. And then as we're running through those chapter heads there, you can see we're getting towards the end of them. Um, and the final chapter is chapter 22 on future directions, ADR 25 years on. It's been with us a long time now. And then there are two appendices on drafting and on um, court-related documents and directives. Then right at the back there's actually a glossary. You've got, let me just show you that in a minute. First of all we'll look at the table of con uh, cases, which is there. Not that many cases. Then statutes. Then treaties and conventions. Always quite important in this day and age. Arbitration and practice rules. Again, quite useful. You've got um, mainly uh, the conciliation rules. Uh, UN Citral and so forth. Then you've got tables of rules of court, which are there, that's the civil procedure rules of course. Table of codes, protocols and guidance notes. Again, quite important. And then what you've got at the beginning, you see chapter one, analysing ADR, you've got paragraph numberings at the side and you've got footnotes. And as I say, at the back, after the, the index, is a bibliography, quite a substantial bibliography there. And then after the bibliography is you've got a glossary. That normally would be on the front of the book, at the front section, but it isn't. It's at the back. And of course, after, after, after you've got the glossary, if you're working backwards, you've got the appendices. But there we go. That's, that gives you an idea of the glossary itself. There are two, as I say, there are two appendixes. There's, there's the first one on drafting, for instance. Anyway, altogether a very, very substantial work as is to be expected with anything from um, Thomson Reuters, Sweet and Maxwell. So what do we say about the book? Well, there's quite a long review, this one. Um, as ADR, Alternative Dispute Resolution, appears to be gathering force and influence, most lawyers will find it sensible to find out more about it, a task in which this handy one-volume text can admirably uh, assist. And I do think that's important because when I started as a barrister, call and afterwards, we didn't have ADR really at all. I was coming in recent, more recent years as a, an alternative mechanism to going to court and slonging it out in the courtroom itself. And it does have its uses. 
The difficulty I have, and I'll be very blunt, is by the time people come to me, they are not interested in ADR. Not, they're not looking at dispute resolution in any other way except by going in front of a judge and getting the decisions made. Because normally they're absolutely clear in their own minds that what their claim is is absolutely right and the other, the other side are wrong. So that's really where there is it's sometimes a problem. But those are not the majority necessarily of cases. This fourth edition then is coming out to just the right time in 2018. It's from the well-known Sweet and Maxwell uh, titles and it indicates obviously by its longevity that it's emerged as the definitive text in this subject area and I think you can read it and rest assured that the information therein is reliable and the commentary well judged. The book certainly presents a range of options and points of view from which the readers can form opinions of their own and the editors observe in the preface that they can claim that ADR has come a long way in the intervening 25 years, commenting further that it's true to say that ADR in the UK has, in its various forms, gained traction and become more accepted as part of the mainstream of dispute resolution. I'm sure that's right, but uh, also I would make that caveat that, that there are one or two people who are not going to want to go down that route. Now the first two chapters, I think, are in particular of importance because they provide a comprehensive and comprehensible introduction to what ADR is all about and the way it does and doesn't work. The first chapter, Analyzing ADR, right at the front, really does a thorough job of analyzing the terms dispute, resolution and alternative, adding the suggestion that the word alternative might or should be changed to appropriate. That's an interesting point because some people suggest that uh, the word alternative is, is unnecessary, it's just dispute resolution. But actually it is an appropriate dispute resolution for the, the type of, uh, of differences of opinion between the parties. In the meantime, of course, the range of ADR procedures is carefully reviewed as a spectrum of processes. But does ADR, which more often than not centres on mediation, actually work? And does it really provide a viable alternative to going to court? Answers to either of these questions will inevitably be controversial and often, in, often inconclusive. Typically, at least, in the recent past, many individuals on the client side involved in often intractable disputes will insist on avoiding mediation altogether and going straight to court, then discovering when they get there that you have to mediate or have you mediated. Query, the query being from normally being put forward immediately by the court. Now, all this notwithstanding, considering the assertion uh, by Sir Alan Ward, Chairman of the Civil Mediation Council, who makes this remark in the books forward that no one can sensibly doubt today that mediation is a vital tool in the administration of justice and that commercial arbitration in the City of London has won worldwide acclaim and is flourishing. He's absolutely correct and in fact the legal services market post-Brexit is an important one for us to consider because we've got to start looking afresh at how we are actually selling ourselves and, and what sort of things we can sell, one of which of course is using uh, certainly commercial arbitration in, in the city itself. Now citing what they term as the dispute resolution continuum, the editors also refer to a whole chapter of Lord Justice Jackson's report reserved for ADR and its utility in the resolution of civil disputes in the UK. This includes, they add, a recommendation for a serious campaign to ensure that all litigation lawyers and judges are properly informed about all the benefits ADR can bring and that the public and the small businesses should be alerted to the benefits of ADR, which I think is a, a fair comment. The implication here, of course, is that ADR points the way forward for the future on a rocky road to settling disputes in the 21st century. This could well happen, and in fact, perhaps should, as many lawyers would agree, but only if the public are alerted to the benefits of ADR. And I don't actually think enough of them know about it. It's a, another area for public legal education. Now, of course, those not entirely familiar with ADR will find the subject perhaps more complex than they may have thought possible. And therefore, I think they'll find this book 
enlightening and certainly topical as much new material has been incorporated into this new edition from commercial and family mediation practice to the impact of IT and the processes of ODR, which is online dispute resolution, which of course is, is gathering pace at the moment. And I would say, of course, with family mediation, that's a, a specialist area in its own right. Now, information rich is what this book is, with ample research um, references abounding, including a 25-page bibliography at the back, and the book will obviously be considered as essential reading uh, for ADR practitioners, and of course lawyers are interested on a need-to-know basis in e ADR and where we're going with it. And the publication is, is cited as at 2018, and I'm recording this uh, in the early autumn of 2018. Let's just have a look at one last um, take on the book. There's the front cover again, as you, as you see, Brown and Marriott, ADR Principles and Practice. Opening it in the middle, you can see here, this is Processes and Terminology. Um, it's really quite heavy, this book, in some ways, but there's a lot of information. There's the paragraph numbering. There's the um, footnoting at the bottom as well. But you can see there are a lot of, a huge amount of work has gone into this. And of course, as I mentioned, the bibliography at the back gives you a good idea of, of how much work uh, all the people involved, uh, these, these good people here, all these people have um, been involved very a very um, huge amount of time to produce this book. A big thank you anyway to all of them. A great opportunity for us to review this book as well um, and I'm delighted that we have this uh, as as moving the whole question of ADR forward after its first 25 years. Thank you to all. Bye-bye.